I have to start by acknowledging that I was actually inspired to do something quite radical by, well, not, I don't think they imagined I'd be as radical as I was, but Belinda and Al have been presenting on some work they've been doing in Al's course on trying to engage students over the years. And I was actually inspired by one of their presentations to have a go at doing something about my course. Uh, so let me just background it a little bit. It's um, a first year course in the Bachelor of Social Science degree, which is taught in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. The, the students do eight <coughs> core subjects in that program, and they are basically focused on teaching research and policy analysis. Uh, we also draw in a lot of other students. We have a Bachelor of Social Science in Criminology, um, which is particularly problematic for us because the criminology students come to university to do criminology and suddenly they find they're doing social science because that's the name of the degree. And so they, um, they're a bit of a, uh, to use a pun that um, I didn't intend, but they're a captive audience in that respect, the criminology students, sorry. But, um, then we have Bachelor of Social Science Law. We have Bachelor of Social Science Science, Bachelor of Social Science Social Work. In the first year course that I teach, and I've taught it now for about 15 years, um, it's a large group of more than 200. Sometimes it's been as high as three, depending on the intake. It's probably compulsory for, I would say, at least 75% of students. So I've got a slightly different um, uh, course. Um, I've, I've, I've already done my pun earlier, on, obviously, when I was writing this. So it's a, I didn't think, I thought it was new, but it's not. Um, but I didn't realise it was a pun at the time, criminology students particularly have to. But we do have, um, we do have a lot of students who have to come and do the course. So that, that sort of creates a bit of a problem. So on top of that, um, we have a very diverse group of students. So we have high academic achievers, so people who've gotten into law, um, the, and then we also have access students who have only, who have sort of been supported into university um, and have fairly sort of, um, or might be considered to have low UAI. So we might be dealing with a diversity in UAI between 60 and 99. So we've sort of got this very big um, gap we have also diversity in, we have a lot of local Australian students, but we also have fee-paying international students uh, with uh, attendant language difficulties and different learning styles. So we've got to try and adapt across uh, students who are experienced in Australian culture and students who are um, coming to Australia for the first time. We've also got another set of diversity in that we're getting students, oh sorry, students straight from school that should have been and students have been in the workforce for years. So we've got students who've come straight out, they're 18, 19 years old, and then we have others who've been in the workforce for three, four, five, 20 years, 30 sometimes, uh, and they've already been working in research and policy environments, but they want some you know, consolidation of their skills into a degree program. So we've got students in their first year of study as well, and we've got students in their fourth year of study. And we also have general education students. I had a medicine student in the class this year. So you can see, you know, not only have I got this group that um, some quite seriously don't want to be there, but also um, we've got this huge diversity as well. For me, um, there's been a simultaneous emergence of three problems, and these have sort of been gradual in some respects, but they've also been converging. Um, I lecture. This created an environment where the students could miss the lecture uh, with a view to picking it up later. They were more likely to come in late because, you know, they're thinking they could pick the beginning up later. They might leave early. So although I've been lecturing in this course in this time, I was experiencing a lot more of this kind of disruption where people would just happily wander in and out. Um, and also that the actual population was dropping away quite rapidly. Um, also, the eye lecture hits showed, watching them year by year, you could see that in the early stages of eye lecture, you know, you get 50, 60, 70 people listening to the lecture and by week um, eight, nine, you'd be lucky to have eight. Um, I'd, also had a, um, I'd also had the privilege of having a two, uh, just a one hour lecture in this time 
and a two-hour workshop, which is very practical, meant to consolidate the theoretical um, aspects that were covered in the lecture itself. So the workshops were practical, uh, and they are the, they, that was where attendance was taken, and we were required, you know, we had, the, had that. Um, my head of school uh, um, was looking for budgetary cuts, so she asked me to reduce the workshop to one hour. Um, other budgetary issues related to funding in relation to our casual staff. Um, and one thing I need to add there is that we've had staff shortages, um, I suppose, much like the Australian economy in general. But it's been increasingly difficult to get staff to teach in our program. Um, casual staff, PhD students are under a lot of pay them to attend lectures, so we used to make sure the tutors were really in inclusively treated. Um, uh, we used to pay them to attend weekly meetings, we used to pay them for consultation, um, and that, that, you know, I think helped a lot to keep everybody on the same page with what was happening in the course. But now we don't pay for any of that, we pay for a couple of consultation hours around time when people are actually um, handing in assignments, students are handing in assignments. So um, tutors are increasingly disengaged from the course and also spread across more courses because they're picking up other teaching to compensate for all the lost hours that they were paid to attend lectures. So they might be teaching in three different courses, running around um, and very disengaged, not catching up with you. Um, you know, I, I, would, I was reduced to a weekly email to the tutors, this is what we're doing, but it was very difficult for them to kind of translate that if they hadn't ever taught before in my course. So this was um, resulting for me in an increasingly uncomfortable environment and um, referring to the UNSW guidelines on learning that are on the back, on the back wall there, um, they say, you know, we should be creating an inclusive and engaging environment and I found that um, we were not, uh, we were increasingly not engaging or inclusive, we were actually becoming more distant, I was more distant from the students, more distant from the tutors and um, you know you might only get 40 turning up to the lecture theatre and so information about assessment tasks that I felt needed to be given to everybody was only going to 40 people, the tutors were misinterpreting or had the capacity to misinterpret what was required in the assessment and were giving different information so people were getting, you know, every, everything was becoming fragmented. Uh, so I've got a course, this is the, the final result of all these problems coming together. The course, which is largely mandatory for students in this area and diverse, I thought was becoming a breeding ground for alienation, fragmentation, and the polar opposite of what we expect from our quality learning and teaching. So, what did I do? Um, well, I'd say um, my solution was fairly radical. Um, so, it, uh, after, as I said, the head of school suggested I lose my two-hour workshop, I decided to run the two-hour workshop in the theatre and to give up the tutorial at all. Um, so, I had, I had one contact two hours with 200-odd with students in the lecture theatre and that was replacing the, what was going to become the traditional mode of two lectures, one tutorial. Um, I made uh, attendance compulsory in line with the New, S New South Wales requirements for 80% attendance. So I sent rolls around at the beginning of the lecture for students to sign. And at the end of the two hours, I used a Harvard minute paper system, uh, which I can explain later if people aren't familiar with that. It's just a, it was a half sheet with a single question on it with their name, student number and they, they would respond to a question that I raised in relation to what we were covering that week. But that was also contributed to their attendance mark, so they stayed, which was a problem in itself, as we will see um, as the session wore on. With the lectures, instead of standing there and giving a standard kind of uh, lecture or, you know, I actually wrote them out. So I wrote out um, something like three to 4,000 words every week and put it up online. And that was also attached, I'm going to show you in a minute an example of that, but that was also attached to a, accompanied by a self-help quiz that the students could see whether they'd understood what the learning was. 
Um, they also were required to make discussion postings every week and that was marked, but it was very low mark, 0.5. Um, I'll say more about that later. Um, and that kind of replaced the traditional tutorial. Um, the end of session exam was uh, replaced by weekly submissions of 250 to 500 words. Um, and there were eight of those throughout the session. And they weren't exactly weekly in the end because I, I fell over in the, in the context of this was totally exhausting, the development of this course. I must have been stark staring mad. Okay, so um, already you can, you can probably guess this is like a really, really different mode than was already operating. And I'm just going to show you one week. You can see the weeks were all set up like this um, and when they opened a week they would see something like this. So the, this was the beginning of the lecture and it would go for 3,000 words or so. On the left hand side they had links to various readings that were expected to be done for the week. They also had um, a quiz that was the self-help quiz. They had a discussion in the, each week which contributed to their participation mark. They had a general discussion section and there was also an anonymous discussion section where they could post comments about how they were finding the course. I'll refer to that in a minute. When I went into the lecture, any kind of outlines I did, I would also put up as a PDF for the students. So, um, it was, uh, so in the actual workshops themselves, so that's a general, anyone want to ask any questions about that before I close it down? I'm sorry, I'm racing a bit because we're on fairly yeah, short I mean, time spans. Do you indicate? what the minimum expectations are in a student, because that's quite a daunting list of things to do each week. Yeah, uh, yes, in the handout that they get in originally, they can see what is, um, I mean, in terms of, um, well, one of, the, one of my tools of engagement, if you like, is assessment, because anything that is going to receive the marks, they will give attention to. Yeah. So um, all of that was outlined in the handout, that discussion postings and so on would, um, would gain the marks. It was only 0.5, but it was incredible that they, that oh, they actually... It was gold. Had a gold, yes, it was. Um, I mean, it was a very small. But um, any other questions? I'm going to close this page down, but I'm happy to show it again. I'm on... How long have I got now? Another um, two minutes or something? Five minutes. Five. <laughs> so, oh, OK. All right. So um, any other questions on... Yeah. yeah. Just, that's, that's that 3,000 words, that's a lot. Are they, yeah. they Yeah. Yeah, and there were also links in here, so you can see that, for example, here I've referred to the Nuremberg Code, which was one of the first ethical, um, this, is a, a, this is actually politics and ethics in research, but the Nuremberg Code was actually one of the first foundation frames for thinking about how to behave in, from human to human, and so if they wanted to actually look deeper into the topic, they could click on that and that would come the web page that details the Nuremberg, Co Nuremberg Code. And there were a lot of these links embedded into the lectures in very ways. So any definitions, any key, key terms that I thought they perhaps might want to look at in more detail, so that quantitative and qualitative, I had links to Wikipedia where I thought they were appropriate or other forms of the online encyclopedia of the social sciences, anything that was actually going to be relevant. So all the way through these lectures, they could actually click to deeper aspects if they wanted to. Any other questions before How long I... did it take you to prepare? Hours. <laughs> hours. <laughs> hours a day? Uh, yeah, all of the above. It was, um, I actually, towards the end, the quality deteriorated. I think from about week 10 particularly, it, it, it just, you know, at the quizzes, I couldn't think anymore. My brain was completely fried. I, um, because I, the other thing was that administratively taking a roll, taking a minute paper and having a discussion paper, all of that had to be marked off. So it used to take me well over a day just to do that administrative stuff, um, which was nuts, you know, but, so I've got to think about how to address some of these things, but it certainly, um, certainly had them turning up, uh, whether or not I wanted them to turn up by the week, by the latter stages of the week, of the session I can, is another issue which I'll address shortly. But, um, this was the first go. Oh, yeah, so next time yeah. you all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's yeah. Going to be much easier. yeah, yeah. And I will start at the back to revise, whereas, you know, because I started at the beginning and then flagged towards the end. Um, 
So yeah. Did yeah. You have help marking some of this? I did have some help marking, but I didn't have any administrative support. But because I think I saved the school probably a million dollars. So <laughs> you know, I should have actually I didn't because I was you know, when you're doing something for the first time you're often doing it by touch and feel and you you don't foresee what you put yourself in for. And I think I should have actually realised the admin consequences and asked for support person and my head of school said if I want to do something like this again I'm, I can have administrative support which is unusual because normally you know but yeah I saved them I was I saved them heaps and um, nearly collapsed in the process but anyway <laughs> okay so did it work um, so all this effort uh, I'd say yes largely it did however it really polarized um, student views and for some it didn't work at all, they hated it. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, actually, we've got these things we could, we're supposed to hand out. Ow, ow, <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. See, I'm not, not good on organisation sometimes. Um, plus, I'm leaving for Queensland for three months, so I'm sort of a bit kind of disconnected. Um, did it work? Yes, largely. However, it really polarised student use, and for some it didn't work at all. I had three forms of evaluation running throughout this. The first one was an anonymous discussion posting on Vista where they could say what they liked about the course. Um, this required me to have a stainless steel spine by about week five because there were some really nasty um, comments in there and um, it was very depressing. But it tended to be the people who weren't happy with it tended to be the ones that spoke up, as I found out later. Um, and so you get you get um, you get really sort of uh, horrible comments followed by, well, I think you're all being really harsh, and I think the course is fabulous, and I love having it online, and so you have, and then you feel better for a day or two, and then the nasties have come back. <laughs> so I had to sort of have courage and think, oh well, I'm here now, I'll just have to keep going. However, when in the Vista program itself, I was able to produce a quick, a, a fairly short evaluation where I asked them to evaluate the course on whether if they had to start again, would they like it the way it was or would they prefer the traditional format of two lectures and one tutorial which they'd come to experience in other courses. 103 said keep it as it is and 42 said abolish it. So it was, it was very, very polarised but the, um, the, the people who liked it were, were two thirds of the course. So, yeah. I just thought that relates to the student culture policy, they expect it just to be passive. Yes. Even though it might actually be quite good for them, they're not going to like it, they're not going to like it. Yeah. It takes time to do this. Yeah. No, it was definitely different. There's no doubt about that. How, how, do, you, how do you evaluate it? I mean, the students now probably don't have the same note taking skills that they would have had otherwise. Uh, so they come out quite a different product. So how do you feel that equips them from the world? Um, well, note-taking skills, I think you get them from summarising readings, which they had to do before they could respond to the submission questions each week. So I think that, although it's not so much the listening skills, but we're becoming a very visual society, I think, at the same time as we are, um, you know, as technology is, is coming in our lives, I think that the oral skills, I think, I think they're very poor among students now compared to when I started teaching and that they expect, I mean one of my evaluations said more YouTube, the, the lecturer should use more, oh, some YouTube, which I'd never used in my life, but you know, I presume it's, you know, but they saw someone else using it. Yeah, and wanted, you know, YouTube being used, I mean they want this visual experience more, much more than they did when I first started, I feel, that's my personal opinion. Um, Sue, so yep. Okay. Oh, I just got one more page just to finish off. Um, what the, um, the modifications that I'm going to do for next year, there are a lot of complaints about the size of the workshop because when I split them into group activities, the noise level was horrendous with 200 odd people. So um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of actually running this again in the same format but having smaller numbers of workshops, perhaps split it into two or maybe even three. Um, there was a loss of attention at about the halfway mark, and I'm hoping smaller groups would help. There was lots of paperwork. The discussion postings I'm going to change to make them more analytical, so that in, instead of just writing something, they have to respond, deliberately respond to the previous postings, 
and analyse them before they make their contribution and the marks will be higher. Um, online submission, I had too many and um, I'm thinking of using online submissions um, via Turnitin and which will make the course even more um, online than it is now. I had complaints from students that they were doing the course by correspondence. So there were lots of complaints, but there were lots of very good compliments as well. It was a very polarising experience. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned that you didn't have a final exam. For this no, course. I did so, have up until this year. Okay, then so you evaluate their learning outcomes through assignments, is it? How did you? Uh, yes. Well, there were uh, two assignments, two, two assessment assignments. tasks that right. were the same as the previous year. And they also had to respond to, we, to the submissions, which, of which there were eight in all, which reflected what we were learning. So they wouldn't have been able to answer those without learning the material. It did create a very independent learning environment. Um, and that was one of the complaints someone made too, as well. It was too much, I had to do too much myself, basically. They were saying, inst instead of just being taught, you know, I came to university to be taught. Um, so yeah, yeah. What was your experience with people read, uh, doing the readings before coming in the workshop, and how could you check or see that they actually? It, the, a lot of them did the readings coming into the workshop because I set up the um, submission questions at a certain time. But I did, I so that they would, the question would come online at a particular time. So that basically they were better off if they did all the readings first. But that got a little bit out of whack. Um, because some people would have done the reading, some people wouldn't. And so I did, I did have a bit of an, a problem with that. So I need to think about that timing next, next round of when, when things are required to be done and when they have to make the submissions and so on. Um, with the assignments, you said that they were the same last time as this time. Mm. How did they go, the students? Like, were, there, were their marks higher? Or the same or the Their same? marks were higher, actually. And also, in the, in the um, CATI evaluation, which is the university one, although overall it didn't change the final evaluation grade, um, the, a lot of the um, individual learning and teaching agreed type things were up quite clearly. So um, all, in these ones, they were all up by at least 3% and sometimes as much as 8%. So the aims of the course were clear to me. The course was challenging and interesting. The course was effective for developing my thinking skills, e.g. critical analysis and problem solving. I was provided with clear information about the assessment requirements. The information course materials provided in this course were helpful in understanding its content and the aims of the course were met. All, all of those went up by three to, between three and eight percent. But the overall, um, what's that one? Um, the um, overall, the course is blah blah, was almost identical to last year. So, uh, one of the, I mean, I, for me, the biggest problems were, were just the polarisation that I that some people loved it and other people hated it. Like one of the evaluations, like I had some really lovely, fantastic evalu comments, which I tend to focus on the bad ones when I was writing this, but. Um, but some of the really, I mean, some the bad ones were things like, don't ever do this again. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the good ones were, you know, having all the materials available online uh, allowed me to work at my own pace and to gain understanding and to be able to do the discussion posting online was fantastic because I'm really shy and I never say anything in, a, in tutorials. Uh, and um, so it was great to be able to participate and to share with other students. And How it works spatially? You said uh, that within, is it within a lecture theatre? Yes, it was in Matthews Bay. And you're running workshops, yes. which means that students have to sort of group together somehow. Yes. In a, in a lecture theatre that's yes. where the seating's all. Yes. <laughs> it worked, but it was very, very noisy and it did break down as the session went on. Physically and spatially? Um, well, you can get two or three and two or three to turn around and talk. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it, it was okay. There was, it became, I had Chris in the room and I had um, another tutor, Kim. So they were both kind of helping around the, I wasn't on my own in this huge theatre, but they were sort of helping with stuff and, yeah. Is there a 
the students know that it's sort of the experiment that you're running yes. for the first time? Yes. And do you think that the feedback that they gave, they actually felt that it will influence the next round? Or I think, I don't know. Back? Did you talk about the feedback that you received? Uh, in the end, I didn't get to do the feedback because I hadn't analysed it properly before we had the last lecture that I was at, so yeah. Um, Chris, were you going to say something there? Chris was in the room with me. I think after week two, they forgot it was an experiment. <laughs> Except the ones that really were annoyed about something, right? Because there was only one time slot and it wasn't on I lecture, they were like, well, I have, to, I have to come an hour and a half each way to attend this class. And I find it really annoying that it's compulsory and this sort of, you know, so it was a sort of that kind of stuff that, uh, and that, those people seem to carry that grudge right through to the final evaluation. They were still making those comments. So, um, look, it was a really challenging thing to do and I must have been nuts. We, we do a similar, well, we do, there are some similarities in what we do in engineering in that we break up the lecture yep. into having a uh, book Yep. Groups and, and, and asking them to work in groups yep. and asking them, please talk. Yep. Get the noise up and release all that talk to yep. them. And you go to the back of the lecture yep. and have that out. Yep. And release of energy and yep. um, a bit of engagement. Yeah. Uh, and if they've talked to others and shared uh, their ideas. Yeah. And, we, and that was exactly the approach I was taking. But because of the size, I think it did break down a bit where if people didn't feel like doing it, they'd just do something else because we couldn't monitor that many people. Um, so, and that, you know, was, there, were, there was a little group right-hand side, back corner, like probably 20, 30 students. And basically, Chris and I could have drowned them by the end of the session. Pardon? Right-hand back corner? Okay, so. <laughs> they were they were particularly difficult, and um, I don't know what you know what part of that list of diversity we they were, but yeah, they were um, they they made it very difficult as the session went on, and and I think that if I run it twice, um, I could actually break that down a lot better. Um, that I don't know for sure. <laughs> we, we, we talked pretty much entirely about what the students thought. Yes. You say it's very polarised. Yes. Two thirds, one third. If you put them together, which group are the better product? Ah. Uh, which uh, was it equally polarised in the assessment of each? I, I wouldn't know. You could have couldn't find that out. Yeah. There's you no way. Of, the outcomes, not process. Yes, and there's no way to actually find that out. Yeah. I mean, I because valuation is always anonymous by its nature. I can't tie it into whether they were high achievers, low achievers, or where they were from. So it's just impossible to do that. I wish it was, were possible, but... Well, I did it once, but it was in a tricky way. Yeah. You had a question in, you had one question early on that asked, uh, what is your expectation? Do you think you're going to get an ID, a uh -huh. graded pass? Yeah. Then another question later on, which yeah. then asked, you know, about something that I want to look at and link the two. Right. See, you know, yeah. uh, did they say that they were going to get a HD? Yeah. And then, see if the ones that were giving the bad comments were the weaker students or yeah. not. Is it, you need to know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, part, I did in the VISTA evaluation have questions about, are you a first year student and, and uh, are you a BSOCSI student? So uh, there were ways for me to actually break some of that down, uh, but um, overall, not particularly good. Belinda. Um, in terms of the, the year before, running at the year before in a normal lecture basis, yep. what were the student outcomes like? How, how Very similar, it? although marks were higher. If, you, if you're using marks as a student outcome, I think they were very similar, and even the, um, even the Qatar results were very similar. So, or slightly better, as I said, on quite a number of areas. So, friendly enough, you say, that wasn't Yeah, I mean, I sort of feel like it, it's a bit of a... Um, the, the dichotomy might have come from people who are comfortable with computers and those that aren't. And I think that that's something that we're facing in the university at the moment where we've got young students who've used internet um, quite extensively in their school careers. But at the other level we have people who haven't had very much experience and are very uncomfortable with them and find that being asked to go online is really... You know, it really upsets them. Um, so we're kind of in this transition phase, which we've been in for many no, years. In. Actually, though, to be able to use 
Yes, well, exactly, yeah. So, I mean, I did point out that we were upping their skilling and preparing them for the workforce. Um, I think we're going to Fine. Now,